Welcome everybody um, to the third talk. Um, it's brought to us by Devdas. Um, he's talking about graphite and cool graphs. Um, have fun with graphite and Devdas. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so, how many people here use graphite? Okay, that's a lot. How many people don't use graphite? And what are you using instead? MRTG? Cacti? Nothing. Nothing? Okay. <laughs> So, just to give you an idea of what scale we are at, that graph in the background is how many metrics per minute we are pushing. And that is a million there, yes. When I started this whole thing a couple of years ago, a colleague of mine brought graphite in, I wanted to bring it in and it ended up, we started off on a VM. Uh, first day, fantastic stuff. We got in some random data graphs. This, we had, had to do some metric analysis for faxes, and it uh, turns out hotels like faxes. So we got the business owner for that particular product to do the graphs herself. So graphite, as easy to use as Excel, except on the web. So, oops, what? Right, okay, ah, wrong slide, okay. Uh, so graphite basics, it generates graphs from time series data. It's more flexible than MRTG or Cacti or any of those static rendering tools. It doesn't quite yet do fancy front ends, but you can always write your own. It is written in Python, and at our scale, it does have a performance impact. For most people, it shouldn't matter. It's web-based, easy to use, and I seriously mean, if you know how to use, if you can generate a graph in Excel, you can do it in Graphite. It helps a lot when you're doing business metric stuff. We, at Booking, we worship at the Church of Graphs. If it can be measured, if it's a time series thing, we will have a graph for it. We occasionally have pie charts, which a bunch of people go, nope, doesn't make sense. No, 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 we want pie charts. Graphs are good at pattern recognition. Humans are really, really good at this. It's an evolutionary benefit. We can do correlation across things. This happened, this other thing happened, as long as you can bring in those graphs together and see it in one big picture. If you can't, problem. You can do analytics on this. You also do analytics on raw data in graphite. Uh, for those of you who haven't done business analytics stuff, it's fairly interesting to be able to see this stuff. And of course, anomaly detection. What went wrong? Why is my hotel book rate going down? Why is it going up? Why are my page views suddenly going up, suddenly going down? What has changed? How fast can you detect this? Can you find this out in five minutes? Can you find this out in an hour? What is the time difference? What is, how, how laggy is it? And suppose that this happens at three in the morning, because these things always happen on a Friday night at 3 in the morning, or worse, Saturday morning, well, can you get someone to wake up and look at this? You have things for that. Graphite is extremely useful at this. For, there's a few useful features that make it more interesting. If you have looked at MRTG and you insert a point in the future, for RRD, you cannot put a point in the past. It must always be, timestamps have to be monotonically increasing, otherwise you suddenly have this giant gap. Graphite, well, I forgot to put in the data yesterday, let's fix that today. It just works. And the graph corrects itself. You don't even have to do anything. You can, be, there's a function that says, take this data, give me the same data, time shifted by one week, by one day, whatever. Show me what happened at the same time yesterday. If you're doing, I'm not going to do the whole graph thing on this mostly, because most people are here are using it and it's easy enough to do. But you can actually see these things happen and say, okay, what changed? We did this last week, we did this on the corresponding day last year. How much, has, how much have things changed? What more do we need to do to get things better, worse, whatever? You can have, and more importantly, you can choose to define a custom retention period in a reasonably easy format. So not all metrics are equally valuable. And you can say, okay, these metrics, I need them for three days, but at that point I need them for one second resolution. This other stuff, well, 
I'm ha I probably need it for four or five years because that's how long the server is going to live. But I don't need to keep the same data running around all the time. And I don't need to keep it at one secondly precision. Maybe the last hour only at one second, then after that minutely, and then at some point, maybe I want to keep one point every six hours. Why should I waste disk space? Graphite is Unix-y, it has lots of moving parts. There are the relays which basically push data around. Uh, they, you can do this in one of two ways. You can choose to pattern match with a regular expression, or you can use consistent hashing, or both. Uh, pattern matching is something that you may or may not want to do all the time. Uh, consistent hashing is, we have found that it actually ends up scaling better, but we also do pa uh, pattern matching for some specific cases. There is the standard storage backend. This is fixed size flat files. Uh, Whisper, it's supposed to be replaced by Ceres, uh, and it doesn't really scale very well. At least once you reach a few hundred thousand metrics or so, but that's mostly because hardware tends to melt down. And these are created when the metric is first recorded at full size, after which it's all in place updates. Graphite is not enterprisey, it does not have access controls. Anybody and everybody with access to Graphite can make metrics. This is considered to be a feature, not a bug. This is important because random people, as I have discovered at work, well, we would like to store this data. Yeah. How much space do you need for this? Well, only five terabytes. But uh, well, right. But I need that. I need five terabytes in an hour because you can create metrics that fast. So I'm only pushing in one data point. Damn it! <laughs> no, you're not. You're pushing in n number of named data points. Kills you. Oh, and then there is a Django-based front-end application that offers you the API and the JavaScripty flat front-end. Right, so the output web API, everything is a HTTP get. This makes for some horrible, horrible URLs. And it, you, uh, we have run into the size limitation of a web server that says, your get request can only be so big. No, damn it, we need more. And it offers you a number of functions for data manipulation. I'm assuming most people can go look up the front end or the API, it's easier than uh, spending time describing that. Uh, you get output in multiple formats, graphs, structured data, and raw data itself. The important part of structured data is that it lets you hook into other tools, which means that, uh, as I'll explain later, we have things that literally say, OK, give me monitoring data for this, pull it from Graphite, run some calculations on it, and then actually end up saying, here, maybe some human needs to go look at this. For things like, say, disk usage. Nagas is fantastic at telling you my disk is, is at 95% is full or 80% full or whatever. But 95% full and growing at 1% versus 80% full and, oh, it's only been growing at 5% in the past four hours. Well. The 80% case is probably what you want this admin to look at before it goes critical. So that sort of thing, that sort of data uh, analytics is something you can do with the output from Graphite because timestamp data. Using Graphite, default dashboarding, default front ends, built-in dashboards, custom third-party libraries, all that stuff, all the jazz. Er, sorry, it's this is basically very very standard stuff, and it, it's pretty much boring if you are not doing it. This is yep. Here's the JavaScript library. Slap it in front. Write some data glue. You're done. Here's a pretty graph. Or if you're a business user, use these default metrics. Set up a dashboarding application. Go. Do not bo come bother a sysadmin about this. Don't come bother a developer about this. Just do, build your own graphs. Uh, oh, right. So this is where it starts to get interesting. We use the API for monitoring, as I just said. Pull down raw data. Give me stuff. Unhappily, when you are a large company like us, it turns out that just pulling raw data is slightly painful. 
you can make web servers melt down. If you are pulling down data for enough boxes, fast enough. Naga has pulled 75 minutes per box, 5,000 boxes, web server's dead. Thank you very much. Uh, we have uh, runtime performance tuning currently happening. So we have applications that are supposed to update databases. And we have databases that replicate. So how do you know how bad the situation is? Well, this data is reported to Graphite. So you go to Graphite, pull it, see if your replication is laggy enough. Is it tolerable? Then, up, then do the next update, otherwise back off. Rinse, lather, repeat. So we have people who go from, give me the last three points, to people who say, what is the delay in the last 20 minutes? How bad can it possibly get? We also have people who say, well, we, have, we offer an external API to partners, and these guys uh, tend to abuse the hell out of it. So the rate control mechanism, sure. We dump the data to Graphite. Every time you make a call, we push a point to StatsD. It updates and pushes an update to Graphite every so often. And then we just say, yep, sorry, you made 10,000 calls in the last minute. That's your rate limit. Slow down. Postmortem analytics. So I had uh, the uh, lead for the Hadoop group coming and saying, well, we have problems. We don't know where. All that we know is that we have performance problems. Where should I go look? Well, go look at Graphite. We have, a we have a problem with the site being slow. Really? Look at Graphite. We have a problem with bookings being down. Well, go look at Graphite. You can go look at that and say, oh, look, we are missing this. This country's rate, uh, of, uh, this country has dropped. We have visibility pretty much by country by time of day. Performance debugging. Things are slow. Standard problem, right? The website is slow. Show me the data here. That's in your graph. Right, so the hard part of the story. So we started off when we got this into production last two last year in February, February, March something. We had two front end boxes, two back end boxes, RAID 1, 0, four disks. Well, it works for databases. It's not that big. We have cacti. It sits on a similar size box. How, how much worse could be, did we possibly get? Turns out it gets a lot worse. With 200 machines, test set up, yeah, easy enough. Well, the box seems to work. Second day, we are dead. We, with the second day, we ran into this lot of seek problems, and the box basically becomes non-responsive. So we added more boxes. And then we had to split traffic. So, well, let's do some pattern matching. Let's, so half my boxes go here, half my boxes go here based on names. And look, half my metrics are this size, that size, blah, rule of thumb, all that. Balancing traffic is hard. And then we went, yeah, let's just use SSDs. So we replaced spinning disks with SSDs. Massive, massive performance improvement. And well, we still need more, always need more. For some reason, the HP firmware that we had, if you lost a disk, the box would die. This is not supposed to happen in a RAID 1 setup, but we had it happen. It's been fixed with a firmware upgrade, but that was very, very irritating at that point in time. SSDs die, especially in a high update scenario like Graphite. You will need to watch out for this stuff. The, in our environment, they last for somewhere between 12 to 14 months. And this is enterprise MLC stuff. And then well, we grew to 10 servers over the course of a year. And sometime around then we went, yeah, this is too hard to balance out manually because it usually takes us about two days to figure out how much traffic we need, we are sending where, if you're looking at individual metrics and it's still not balanced. So we switched to consistent hashing, and that because it was easier. Again, anyone is allowed to keep create graphs, so everybody does. And 
we got consistent hashing in there, traffic was balanced very nicely and happily. We switched to RAID 0. Well, if the box is going to die anyway, might as well make use of the space. And given that it's two disks, we should probably get a bit more I.O. from the SSDs. It helped. We mirrored data across two nodes in each ring. Lots of redundancy, mirror rings in data centers. And Graphite does unhappily doesn't still have good tooling to make sure that all your data is synchronized. So we wrote a bunch of some ugly shell scripts to shuffle metrics around push things around everywhere, make things hard. And well, it makes things a lot harder when you're doing SS things over SSH. But we were basically able to kind of merge metrics and try and keep things consistent. It takes about one day to synchronize a one server pair. Graphite uses a lot of disk IO. Uh, that again, this graph is as of yesterday afternoon. Uh, yeah, something like that. That's about 200,000 IOPS on a single box. That's what our SSD does, averaging at about 26, 27,000 IO. Still not fast enough. We still don't know why those spikes happen there, and there are a lot of stat2 calls that I should try and, in, that I will probably go and look at and see if we can get rid of just for the performance increase, uh, right? Naming conventions, Graphite has no rules, again by design. People are supposed to do what makes sense to them. So they will do things that don't necessarily make sense to you. Please note that we have people who go, well, this is useful stuff. No, it isn't, your name makes no sense, but, 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 well, no, is it monitors dot something? Is it nagas dot something? Make up your mind, guys, because everybody has their own opinion. So we added about this set of rules. You do not mess around in the sys.star stuff. That is automated metric collection. Sysadmins will reserve that space for use. User.star, use your own user login name after that and we will help you make uh, things become a lot easier. We will, we give them a separate set of boxes. Everybody gets root on that box. Well, everybody will ask for it at least. And they can uh, do whatever they want with their metrics. We are not going to offer to support that too much because, hey, you're supposed to be using it for testing and clean up your own stuff. Do not mess in production. On the, uh, Note that I work, the, the guiding philosophy for a company is we have a test network. You call it production. Anything else that makes sense to you as a developer, as manager, whoever, is perfectly acceptable. We have people who go, well, I think I should call this by this name. Go ahead. I, it doesn't have to make sense to me. It has to make sense to you. Who do we have using this? Unix sysadmins, obviously. Shell, Perl, Python. Our Windows team uses it. Well, they've recently started using this, so I don't know how much they actually use and what they are monitoring at this point, but they have PowerShell applications that send data to Graphite, and they have their own reporting based on this. Uh, there is a Perl module for this, there's Python modules. You can just type in YNC, easy enough. We originally used CollectD for system metrics, uh, turns out that the version we ha were using at that point had a massive memory leak. And it was not fun trying to debug that. We switched to Diamond, which is a Python application. It offers your base framework plus collectors. Collectors are fairly easy to write. Get the data from somewhere, cast it to a float and send. The truly important bit about that, remember to cast it to a float, otherwise it does not send data out. Graphite will, do, will map anything that includes numbers. Uh, we added a few custom patches for internal specific metrics about how we do MySQL replication, delay monitoring, and stuff like that. Most of our patches have been pushed upstream, so if you do a recent enough checkout, you should have them already. And then at some point, we decided that, well, too hard to keep pulling Graphite send data directly from the collector. So we have 
rolling window updates for MySQL. It's a, a moving window of 30 minutes saying this is the re replication delay and so on. And then you send that to Nagas for passive checks. The relay has been the pain point for the past few months. It drops metrics when uh, you hit, when you drop when you push too much traffic at it. It scales, but moderately, so it definitely scales better than the storage. The Python relaying implementation eats CPU for lunch, breakfast, dinner, and then still is feeling hungry about it. We started off with relays on the cluster. Well, it should be easy enough. Just spin up the process. We ran out of CPU. Added relays in each data center, still need more CPU. So we set up a HA proxy instance, which did uh, TCP level load balancing. And we still needed more CPU. We had 20 processes on each box. And this was still when we were doing the 20, 25 million metric per minute number thing. And then we finally ended up rewriting it in C. This is open sourced uh, URLs at the end of the slide set. And we added a few more relay hosts. And this kind of works for us. We, this uh, C relay does both consistent hashing and metric uh, name matching. So you can choose to distinguish between traffic that goes to different clusters. You can even, so one of the things that we had for our network group at the original thing was, well, we need different groups to have different views. So we hacked it in by setting up a customized namespace for each group, having this player data written in via the same channels, and then you simply say, well, there are different front end hosts. So you, if you go to the host for, if you go to this particular V host, you will have a restricted view of the data because it's a different tree route. It's pretty nice that way, but ugly hacks. We send data to multiple places, and as I mentioned, the relays drop stuff. Or hell, things restart, the metrics get dropped, there's a network blip, things happen. We wrote a small application in Go, which zips up data. It's we call it carbon zipper, it's called something else out there. Uh, it's also open sourced. And it gets data from multiple locations and it will give you back a unified result set. StatsD, we don't really use it much. We have a few places that use it, but uh, given that most of what people use StatsD for, we already have an analytics framework. It's not very popular at the moment. So uh, we still we do the same thing and then a lot more with the data. Yeah. Our PCI vulnerability scanner would reliably crash this thing. The bug was in the error handling. There was no error handling in StatsD at that point. Fixed, pushed upstream, but it took a few weeks to detect this because the damn thing would crash sometime at 4 a.m. in the morning. Yeah. I'm not particularly inclined to stay up on Monday mornings for f at 4 a.m. <sighs> Business metrics. Turns out our developers like graphite. But uh, we had people trying to do joins on graphite data. For those of you who know Graphite, you know this doesn't work. For those of you who looked at MRT Jarahadi, you know it doesn't work. But hey, explaining this to every developer who's exposed to this for the first time, hard. Well, it's a lot of work. Uh, as I said, we had someone who decided, whose first exposure to this, well, this looks good. I'm going to show in a lot of metrics, five terabytes of disk space. Last week, timestamp data. There are timestamps in Graphite. Please store, please keep it there and use the API to filter out data. No, no, but, but, but I have, yes, I will put in create metrics with timestamps in them of the of basically date formats. People love this kind of thing. And well, yes, this space uses a sudden, sudden concern when you have no clue of who's going to put data in there and when and how much. Yeah. I mean, if you put in four years' worth of data, it is a lot of space. We are now doing about 30 servers, 30 in each cluster, 
adding something like 10 more sometime in the next couple of months and we aren't going to slow down growth. So probably more and that's just the system side of things. Events is still bigger but I don't know what they plan to do and how they plan to grow yet. We have different groups have different requirements so we ended up with a lot of multiple backend rings. Uh, Unix systems, uh, that's just the sys cluster is about 30 machines. User testing is a two box cluster. We have uh, eight or 10 machines right now for the business metrics and those will probably grow. Uh, we have a separate cluster for our network group and we have a separate cluster for the Windows people. If you can shard out your data, you can still keep one front end or two boxes or three boxes as you need to grow. Each of these things scales horizontally. Hardware, always need more CPU. How much time do I have actually? I think I have a lot. Hmm? Yeah. Hmm? 30 minutes, oh. oh cool. So I got hardware, there's more CPU, there's you, always, you, need, you run into problems if you try to pull in a large amount of data. Uh, the web servers time out because it can't do the aggregations fast enough. Especially if you're pulling in out, if there's a lot of people pulling this out. You can see this as a problem that happens when everybody jumps onto an outage scenario. You have 40 people trying to look at the same complex graph. Ah, well, poor CPU runs out. We need better disk reliability on SSDs or better I.O. some way. We max out SSDs, so we are looking at Fusion I.O. When I gave this presentation at Montrama, someone had asked me why we weren't using Fusion I.O. Well, it's a PCI card, we can't hot swap it. It's kind of important because you would really like to have the uptime as well without having to shut down a box. It's about 10% faster. We do not know about reliability at this point. The box, the card hasn't died. Problems, people, we hate them all. Not really, but sometimes you do. Who here hasn't hated the users ever? Oh good, no hands up. <laughs> if you want a graph, put data in graphite. Graphite is meant for time series data just because one component of your data is time, does not make it useful for all use cases. Performance monitoring, well, especially if you're doing a test and you want to say, how much capacity do I have for this change? Hard. It's very, very hard. But hey, I have got a x axis against time, y axis against time, I got, and even if I'm joining two data values that are again, and getting rid of the time, We'll store it in graphite. No, you don't. This is really a job for a spreadsheet or a database, not graphite. It's not time series data. Front end scalability, the default front end does not work. As we warn people, if you look at our graphite metric stuff and you click on the sys metric, please restart your browser. The browser will basically spin, 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 20 minutes and it will still keep spinning until you restart it. It's a small problem with that thing called JavaScript. Software upgrades, software quality isn't always good. And upgrading to the latest is not always a feature. We, the last time we did a Whisper upgrade, all our write, data writing stopped. It just refused to write any more data for some reasons unknown. Very quick fix, rollback. And yeah. Manageability is hard. Uh, we are trying to get rid of older metrics, which is, well, this thing hasn't been touched in a few months. Or we just got rid of this data center, but that all those metrics are still sitting on disk using up space. My graphite does not do a very good job of cleaning up. Adding host into a ring is painful. Uh, so. At our scale, at least, you probably need one person dedicated full-time to just managing this stuff. If you're doing, depends on how many boxes you're looking at, we look at about five to 8,000 boxes, something between five to 8,000 boxes. 
depending on how many, depending on whether we actually count VMs or not. And the network stuff, stuff we are working on, we are testing out Cassandra as a backend, Cyanite. This looks fairly interesting. Touch wood and all that. Anomaly detection, HC goes rah, rah, rah about Skyline. I can tell you it doesn't scale. Yep, looks very nice. Doesn't not scale because you need to keep a few days worth of data points on a single box to do your decent metrics. We have far too many metrics. We still want more business metrics. How much visibility do we have into the business? A lot. Is it enough? No. We worship at the Church of Graphs. We want more graphs. Thank you. We are looking at sparse metrics, which is basically, I have this potentially thousand varying points of interest, lots of nulls, but uh, potentially a lot of names. So I will have data for three days for this thing, data for three days for this other thing, but they don't have to be correlated. We don't want to keep them lying around for more than a few days, but Graphite doesn't support these things very well at the moment. We are hiring people to work on interesting challenges. We are sp looking at sponsoring a Dev Summit in June uh, around the DevOps days. So if anybody wants to show up there, please drop me a note so we can arrange. For, this is probably going to be one or two days a day before, and we'll be looking at uh, possibly getting the Graphite core team to do a workshop uh, for the DevOps days thing. All right, references, and does anybody have questions? Did go through the slides a bit faster. Uh, you talked about the front end, and uh, I would like to know if you only have the default one, but you said that it doesn't scale. And uh, if, you only, uh, if you only have one, uh, why do you choose it? And, or do you provide multiple? So do you say, okay, if you want to do this, then you use this, and so that, that, like, that the guys can explore? Right. Uh, so we provide uh, the default front end. We have a custom cacti-ish thing that's generated from a script where we pull in images. So if you're looking at a single box, yes. We have other people. We have this default dashboarding application. We have a couple of other dashboarding applications that people have asked for. A lot of our developers simply go and write code to pull data from Graphite and have custom dashboards for their own projects. Uh, does not st we don't stop people from doing things. Part of our philosophy of being open and letting people do their own stuff is that we try to make it easy for people to get their work done. Just because the default front end does not scale very well does not mean that we want to stop you from doing your own graphs. You, you know what interests you, you generate your own dashboards. We basically will offer you the, if you say you want a particular library, we'll package it and offer it to you. That's the easy bit. So people literally use the web API, pull down data. We have people who have got spark lines from who pull this data down, generate spark lines. We have got people who do horizon graphs. Uh, we have cubism supported. We have D3 supported. We have rickshaw supported. We have got a few other things that I don't know of necessarily. I know of one person who was working on using graphite data to generate heat maps. So. It is not a question of whether you, what you restrict them to or what you offer. It's really a question of how much effort people want to put in into getting their graphs. Just a follow up, do you introduce or do you overlay locks, so system locks uh, as well? So We have uh, Logstash and Kibana and all that stuff. We tend to make Elasticsearch people very unhappy with that. And you overlay the information? Uh, well. We overlay timing information into Graphite so we can tell you when uh, an AB experiment was started, when it was stopped. We can tell you when code deploys happened and what impact each code deploy had on that particular role on that website. At a given time, these, dashboard, these graphs keep floating around the office on the, the overhead dashboards. You've got people who actually keep an eye out on this and on a bunch of more important business metrics, like how much money is coming in. <laughs> so, yeah. Be uh, there's a bunch of things that I am not allowed to put out of the company, otherwise there are the truly interesting graphs I can't show you. <laughs> it's one of those, no, this is important to the business and I cannot show it. 
Any more questions? Look, I had a lot of these at Monotrama. Hmm? Oh, good. In which case, I'm done. Cool. Thank you.